I believe that we need to be very intentional this year. The year of bigger, the year of bigger, we're declaring bigger for everything, bigger in our businesses, bigger in our faith, bigger in our finances. We're declaring bigger favor. We're declaring that this will be the year for bigger opportunities, bigger doors, a bigger mindset. We're declaring that this will be the year where we win a bigger amount of souls. I want us to be very intentional this year, y'all. I want us to be, to be very intentional this year. As wickedness increases, as the world, listen to me, as the world continues to get worse, I want us to become wiser with winning souls. Because as the world gets worse, as we continue to listen to the news and see things on social media that is heartbreaking and disheartening, people are going to look for answers, baby. And when they're looking for the answers, I want us to be in place. I want us to be in position. I want us to be able to be knowledgeable. And I want us to be able to be so effective and powerful that we will give them the answers that they need. And the answer is Jesus Christ. And so this is not the year to be afraid, to be timid, to be bashful, and to, and, and, and to hold back our faith. But I want us to be very intentional on purpose. I'm premeditated. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I want us to be premeditated about winning souls. I want that to be at the top of our mind when we wake up in the morning. All right, God, who you got for me today? All right, God, who do I need to go and be a light to today? All right, Father, where are you sending me? What store do I need to go to? What bank do I need to go to? What turn do I need to take? I'm talking that intentional. What store do I need to walk around? All right, I'm walking around the store. I don't need nothing in here, but Father, you sent me here for who? Where, where, where are they? Who is she? Where is he? You are, you're giving me a word. There's something in my spirit for somebody and you're leading me to move and to move now. That's how intentional I want us to be this year in the year of bigger. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? No, 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 no. Time out for keeping our salvation uh, private. Time out for keeping our testimonies to ourselves. Time out for, 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 for being worried about people rejecting us. You are not responsible for people's response. Are you all listening? But we are responsible to share the love and the power of Christ. All right? Get your Bibles. Let's go to the Word. I'm receiving seed, and I'll be praying over you guys' seed. I receive your consecration seed, Tracy. I receive your seed, Nima. Shauna, I receive your seed. Blessings to y'all. Veronica, y'all ain't playing with this thing. I receive it. I'm going to pray over every seed tonight, even if it's not a consecration seed, but you're just sowing into what God is doing. Don't miss it. it, it the, the, the ground, y'all, is good ground. I'm telling y'all, this is very fertile soil. This is very fertile soil. And God ain't taking long to release a harvest when you sow on this ground, okay? For those of you who are not a member of a church and you work a job, I'm telling you guys, as a pastor, you need to pay your tithes. Sow your tithe so that there will not be holes in your pocket. Don't you keep making money working and you not give to God. Jay, I love you, Jay. And you not give to God first. That's the first thing you take off the top is God's money. And all he asks for you to give is 10%. And he says the rest, he will, he will cause it to take care of your needs and your wants. When you give God what's right, he will bless what you have left. Okay? Now, get your Bibles. Let's go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Matthew, the fourth chapter. I'm talking to my cyber church family tonight. Matthew the fourth chapter. And let's start at verse 18. Did you guys get Bibles? Make sure that you get Bibles and you get them this month because that's how we start in the year, reading our word. This is how we're starting the year, 
feeding our spirit man the word of God so that we can be strengthened spiritually so that we can be fortified so when the enemy tries to attack when the enemy comes we have something to fight him with and that's the word okay make sure you get your Bibles get different ones so you can be able to read different versions so it can help you better understand all right so tonight we're going to read from um, King James and Amplify and New Living Translation Okay, so let's go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. And I want to start at verse 18. When you have it, say, I got it. Right now, we're at 143 on Facebook. Keep sharing, family. And we're at 107 on IG. Keep tagging. Let everybody know Cyber Church is back and the word is getting ready to be released. Amen. Matthew, the fourth chapter, 18th verse. Tonight, we're talking about becoming an effective soul winner. How do we do that? How does that work? Okay. Matthew, the fourth chapter, verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers. And the two brothers' names was Simon, who they called Peter, and Andrew, who was Peter's brother. And Jesus saw them casting their nets into the sea. Why? Because they were fishermen. Everybody following? Verse 19. And Jesus walks up to them because he's very intentional. And he says to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. See, right now, you all are skilled fishermen and you only know how to catch fish that's in the sea. But thank you, Peekaboo, for buying a badge. But if you follow me, I will teach you how to become a soul winner. And you'll go from getting fish in the sea to winning men to me. He was very bold. He was very intentional. He knew his target. He knew exactly who he wanted on his team. Hey, you, Peter and, 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 and uh, Andrew, come on, come with me. Because I already see that there's something in you that I want on my team. So if you're going to win souls, you can't be scared to talk to folks. You can't be scared to reach out to people. You can't be scared to say, you know what, what's going on? What's your name? How you doing? What do you do? You ain't going to win souls being quiet. Nor will you win souls staying in the house and staying by yourself. You got to speak to people. You gotta open your mouth. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be very intentional. I am very intentional about my targets. I'm very intentional about making sure I, 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 I horn in on those that the Father says they will be a, a, an asset to the kingdom. That's the kind of workers I want. So when the Father puts them on my heart, then I'm already targeting them. And I'm already using soul winning tools to get their attention. Yeah, I'm very intentional. Everything I do is intentional. How I talk is intentional. How I cut up and laugh is intentional. How I teach the word is intentional. How I dress is intentional. Everything, everything. I don't do anything by accident. I'm, I'm very clear on my personality. I want to be the pastor that cuts up, that's real practical, that's just, that's just chill because I have a target audience. I know who I want. I don't want the deep saints. I don't, I don't want them. I don't. They'll get bored with me. They, 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 you know, I, I'm not deep enough. I'm not revelational enough. I don't use big words. That ain't, and that ain't who I want. That ain't who I want. I, I'll be embarrassed. I'll be in front of them trying to t t talk. And they'll be telling me, that ain't that ain't what that scripture means. That ain't what that Greek word means. See, I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. So I, I know exactly who my audience is. I'm very intentional about who the Father has for me to pour into. Right? So Jesus was intentional. He says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And guess what they did? They straightway left their nets and follow him. What? These jokers ain't asked no questions. They didn't say, what, well, wait, we work, what we gonna do, how we gonna live? They already understood who was calling them. 
And they understood that following Jesus would be the best decision they could ever make. Because they could trust the one that called them. People will follow you if they can trust you. Y'all ain't telling me I'm teaching good. My family don't want to follow me to my church. They don't trust you. They, 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 didn't want to, they don't want to be with me on the consecration. They might not trust you. Maybe you have not given them the right example. Maybe you have not, you know, put before them the right things for them to say, you know what? She's a person that I can follow. He's a person that I can follow. Okay, if he said, I'm rocking with him. Because I see his history. I see her history. I see the fruit. I see the evidence. I see the results that have transpired in their lives. They are safe to follow. Yeah. You, 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 only, you, you, you follow somebody that, that you trust. You follow somebody that you see something in. What does it mean to follow? Follow means to move behind. Follow means what? Uh, to travel behind. To go after. You following somebody because they have something that you want. They're going somewhere that you want to go. That, that there is something about whatever it is that you want to see. So I'm moving behind because I'm, 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 I'm pretty much, I'm observing. I'm learning. They dropped everything and they did what? They moved behind Jesus. And going on from there, then guess what? Jesus was on his baby. He was enlisting soldiers in his army. He let he got them, okay, boom. Got got Andrew, got Peter, boom, let's go. Says he saw two more brothers. He saw James, who was the son of Zebedee, and he saw John, who was his brother. And he saw them in a ship with their father mending the nets and he called them. Jesus saw them with their daddy. He didn't care. So he already got those that was fishing. So they already got skill. They know how to catch fish in order to be a, a, a fish. I, I hate fishing. My girlfriend took me fishing one time and I was bored out of my mind. And she was just sitting there in her casey. Baby, she sat out there for hours and I was just yawning and, and stretching and, and it was getting dark. And, and I said, now how long are we going to be out here? And she just, told me, ain't this nice? And she just rolling the thing and putting the stick in the water. I said, where is the mall? When are we going to the mall? When, when, when are we going to the mall? She was catching the fish. And I'm like, look, look. The little fish just shaking and carrying on. And I'm just like, when are we going to the mall? When are we going to the mall? I don't like fishing. I don't like it. 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 So, 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 so to fish, baby, it takes, it takes patience. When you, when you fishing, you got to be real tedious putting that little thing, that little worm on that hook. You got to have a good eye. Jesus knew he was who he was looking for. While she fishing, I'm looking in the woods to make sure ain't no dog or bear going to come out and eat us up. She was fine. Just singing and, 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 and rolling that thing. and just. And I said, now how long are we going to sit with this stick in the water? Ain't nothing happening. You got to hold it there until you know it, it, you feel a bite. I said, well, they're not biting. It's cold out here. They're not coming. We sitting out here. I'm hungry. I don't want no camp food. I don't want no more s'mores. I don't want no more lunchbox sandwich. I want to go to the mall. To the mall. Take me to the mall. But you got to be tedious, right? You got to be calm. You got to take your time. You got to be willing to wait. You got to put the hook on there. Then pull the hook up. Then you get the fish. Then you put them in the thing. See, it's a lot, it's a lot going on with that fishing stuff. And Jesus knew exactly what he wanted. So now I got the fishes. Now let me go over here and, and get these two brothers that mend the nets. See, they skill with their hands. They skill. See, I need I need some skilled fishermen. I need folks that can see. I need folks that, that can work their hands. So the Bible says he called them. And guess what they did? Guess what James and John did? They left their dad. See, 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 see. This is a whole other lesson. But if you're going to follow Jesus, you, you can't be worried about family. 
It's getting hot in here. If you go follow Jesus, you 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 can't be worried about waiting for approval and waiting for the okay. They didn't say, hey, dad, we got to go. The Bible says what? And they immediately left. They left the ship, boom, and their father. This ain't the year for you to still try to figure out who you loyal to. This ain't the season for you to still, you know, try to figure out, I want to please God and I want to please them. No, 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 no. Not when you go with God all the way. There's some decisions you're going to have to make. And if your family is not okay with you making a decision to say yes to God, and sometimes that yes is going to require you to not be in everything, to not okay everything, to not endorse everything, and guess what? They may not endorse you. You got a decision you got to make. I'm going to come back to soul winning, but let me stay right here for a second. When my mama, I'm whispering, she, she outside. When my mama didn't, didn't endorse me preacher, I had to make a decision. I'm scared, y'all. Whisper, 46, still whisper because I don't want to hear me. Y'all hear me? I'm talking all bold, but I didn't got the whispering. Then. Yeah, because I don't want to come in and say, what you say? When, when mama didn't endorse me preacher. She would tell me, you're not a preacher. You're not called to do that. You're not, you, God ain't, God ain't tell you to do it. I had to make a decision. As much as I love my mama, she, that lady got my heart, y'all. Y'all know it. But I had to make a decision. And if the decision meant my mama won't go talk to me no more because I said yes to working for God, then I had to be okay with that. If the decision meant mama not coming to the installation and mama not going to come and see you when you preach. If that's what it took, that's what it took. Were there times when she didn't come? Yes. Was my feelings hurt? Yes. Did I stop doing what God called me to do? Absolutely not. Are there times when the family got stuff going on and I got family members? She don't have time for her family and she don't ever come around and she never comes to this and she's never at the birthday parties and she's never at the family reunions. I'm out doing stuff. I'm probably preaching. And if I'm not preaching, I'm counseling. If I'm not counseling, I'm home cooking food. I, I, I got stuff going on. And I don't make apologies for missing stuff no more. Because they don't have the assignment I have. And that might sound real cold. And it might sound real heartless. But let me tell you how. how, how let me tell you what sounds colder. Let me tell you what, what sounds colder than that. Jesus was up teaching right. And he is breaking down the word of God. In the synagogue. And his brother came. And his mama came. And they said Jesus Jesus. Your mama outside. And your brother outside. They want to talk to you. And he said who is my mother. Who who who. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who, who is that? He said, those that do the will of the father. He said, that's good. But right now, I got an assignment to these people I'm teaching the word to. And I'm not going to stop doing my assignment to go speak to them. They'll, they'll see me when I'm done. That's in the Bible. But if I if I make a decision for God and not for them, then they going they gonna drop me. He says, when mother and father forsake you, that's when I'll take you up. You'll never be left by yourself. Yes, we want our blood family to be with us. Yes, yeah, especially for those of us who are family oriented and we love to be with our loved ones and we love to laugh and be with our family and celebrate our family. But at the end of the day, if I have to choose between my family blood and the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm going to choose Jesus every time. And for some of you, that's been your thorn because you're trying to please God and them. And them is going against what God is saying to you.
You're supposed to be with the family business, not your own. You're supposed to be the family church. Why did you leave the family church? You're supposed to marry who we picked out for you. Who am I talking to? You do all this stuff for all these people. You pray for all these people, but you don't look out for your family. You give money to all these people. You sow into everybody else, but your family is in need. I'm not giving my family no money that I know ain't going to use it wisely. I'm not, I'm not casting pearls before, uh, before swine, family or not. I'm not paying my family's bills for, because they home lazy and don't want to work. I'm not doing it. And you're not going to make me feel bad for not doing it. I sow intentionally. I go places intentionally. I sow my time and my energy intentionally. I ain't just going just willy-nilly everywhere because it's family. She would never come to my parties. She never comes to my thing. And all y'all in there acting a whole fool. And as soon as the camera go around, they never get y'all. They're going to put me on the camera and say, Pastor Siobhan was there. And all I'm doing is sitting down in the corner. But baby, they're going to tie me in to everybody else. She, I, we think we saw a hookah a thing in her hand. Lie. But how am I going to defend myself? When well, everybody in the room smoking hookah, everybody getting lit, and I'm in the room. What am I going to say? I didn't do it. I was just there. Y'all wouldn't even believe it. Because y'all going to want me to be busted. for. She was. I, we know she, she, we, she act crazy. We knew she'd get high. The girl crazy anyway. We knew she gets lit. That's what y'all would say. So because I got to protect myself, I, I, I'm very careful. Family or not. Family got a whole bunch of people talking and gossiping. They got a bunch. Of, I don't want to be at the table. Because y'all ain't going to say, well, let me tell y'all what, what her thoughts were. Let me tell y'all what she said. You're not going to say what I said because I'm not going to be at the table with y'all. I'm trying to give somebody some wisdom. I'm trying to give somebody some wisdom. These jokers left their daddy right on that boat. Bye, dad. Because this man greater than you. We love you. But you can't give us what Jesus can. So they immediately left. Now we back on soul winning. Y'all back? Y'all know that ADHD kicks in. We back. We back. We back on focus. Uh, verse 23. And Jesus went all about Galilee teaching in the synagogue. So now he got these four with him and they're watching what he's doing. Right? So he's giving them on the job training. He Mr. Miyagi them jokers. He, he waxing on, waxing off. You know Mr. Miyagi? Y'all remember Karate Kid? That's how he taught them. Wax on, wax off. You're learning from watching. So he had them watching him. And he's in Galilee. He's teaching in the synagogues. And he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Not only is he teaching and preaching. But the Bible says that he is healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. And because he was healing the sick, because he was healing all manner of diseases, and he was preaching with power and authority, guess what happened? Verse 24 says, And the fame went throughout all Syria. And then they ended up bringing unto him all the sick people that were taken with diverse diseases. They brought those who were tormented and those who were possessed with devils. And they brought those that were lunatics. And they brought those that had the palsy. And guess what? Jesus healed them. He, he didn't have to go out and pass out no kind of card. He didn't have to say, I am the savior of the world and this is what I do. Guess what? His results spoke for him. It was evident. You cannot argue with evidence. You cannot argue with results. My team was like, you need to go ahead, start putting your little your poster up saying that you're open for bookings. I said, I've never done that and I never will do it. I never put a thing up, open up, open it for bookings. I'm open. I'm available for conferences. Oh no, 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 no! People will know what I do. They want me. They'll find me. The power of God don't have to be 
solicited. It ain't, it ain't gotta be, it ain't gotta be, uh, 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 what is it? Auctioned out. I'm not out here begging for nobody to call me to preach. Hey, if you want to book me, call my number. Get, here's my website. Here's, no, 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 no. You, you want me to come? You send an invitation to the website. But I'm not out here begging nobody to bring me to no church. I believe wherever you're supposed to be, God will make sure you get there. Jesus didn't have to do anything. The Bible says his fame went throughout all of Syria. And the people went and told other people. Results can't be argued. True power cannot be denied. They went and got everybody. They done went and got the people that had the palsy. They done, anybody that had an issue. They done brought the lunatics. They done got all the people that's out of their mind. They said, look, look, get him. Get him, get her, get them, get everybody got a problem because we done found the solution. We done found the answer, and his name is Jesus. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. Jokers came from everywhere. And now there's a multitude that are ready to hear what he has to say. How do I become an effective soul winner? I meet the needs of people. I meet the need before I try to push the Bible down their throat. I demonstrate the power of God because people can't deny power. People can't deny the, 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 the true love of Christ. They, they can try all day long. But when they come into contact with the love of God, it is undeniable. So I got to first find a need and meet the need. I have to first find a problem and become the problem solver. And that opens the door. Now, let me tell you about a man named Jesus. So it was the demonstration. It was the casting out demons and devils. It was the healing of the of the all kind of diverse diseases. Diseases we never heard of before. It was the opening up of blinded eyes that people were seeing. And now they're hanging off of every word that he spoke. You want to be an effective soul winner? Make, make some changes where you live. You want to be an effective soul winner? Open your mouth to, to in places where people don't have a voice. You want to be an effective soul winner? Go to the low area, low income areas in your, where you live. And feed the hungry. Take them blankets, especially in areas where it's cold. Take them soup. Take them food. That's how you become a soul winner. You meet the need. When I was hungry, you fed me. I don't want no prayer when I'm hungry. It's the worst thing when somebody's starving and you want to uh, say a, a long grace. I'm hungry. They hate when I pray when it's time to eat. Because I'm praying for everything but the food. They're looking at me like, yo, can you please just bless the food? You praying for the healing. You praying for us at school. You praying for our report cards. You praying for basketball games. You pray. We want to eat. When folks hungry, they don't want all that long prayer. Duly noted. Okay, I can't. Won't, I won't do it no more, kids. I'm talking to myself. So he met the need. He operated in power and demonstration. And then he brought them to the mountain. And when he was ready, the Bible says his disciples came unto him and Jesus now opens his mouth and he begins to teach and he begins to say blessed are the poor for they shall inherit the kingdom blessed are they that more and that's where you get your beatitudes from but he could not do any of that 
until he did what first? He met the needs that were in the community. Understand where you live. Understand the demographics and the psychographics. What is the mindset of the people where you live at? What, what, what are the needs in the community? What's the demographics? What, what, what is the uh, uh, financial uh, 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 status of where you live? What, what, what is, uh, is, it, is it populated highly with single mothers? Is it populated with, 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 with those who are in prostitution that sell their body? Is it populated with, with drug, drug users? And maybe you don't live in those areas, but you ain't far from it. What can you do to make a difference? How, how, how do we have the answer on the inside and we don't, we don't give the answer to those that need it? It is likened unto a doctor that has a cure to your sickness and he don't give you the cure when you go to see him. You go to the hospital and you are sick. And, and then no one offers you the cure. No one offers you medicine. The doctor would have done you a disservice. Every time we keep the cure to ourselves, we are giving the broken, the hurting, the sick, the confused, the possessed, we are giving them a disservice. And we're not doing what God called us to do. Because this is what we were created for. We were created to work for him. We were created to give him glory. And how does he, he get glory? Us being his hands and feet. Us doing exactly what he would do if he was here. Us making a difference. Us pushing the kingdom mandate and the kingdom agenda. I'm telling y'all, we're the answer. We the answer to all this stuff that's going on in the world. We are. We. The body of Christ. The sons and daughters of God. We are the ones that can turn the world upside down. Two people did it. In Acts. Where is it? Because y'all be thinking somebody playing. Let's find it for me. Find it. I want y'all to find it. I don't know if it was Peter and John. Or if it was... I think it was Peter and John. Let me find it. It's Acts. Find that verse for me, y'all, where it says, These are they that have turned the world upside down. Ain't nothing like this Bible, baby. When you get the flowing, God brings it to you. But I gotta have your Bible so you can y'all can rock with me. What y'all say? Find the scripture first. Then we can rock with you. Okay. I think it's Acts 12. And I should know it because I preach this all the time. Amber, where is it? I want to find the scripture that says, these are they that turn the world upside down. Facebook, come on. Come on, Bible scholars. Where is it at? I ain't even asked IG. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, IG. Acts 17. Let me see if you're right. Acts 17. Acts 17. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, yeah, Jen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you want consecration, Jen? What you want consecration? That's Jennifer Scott. Ah, that's my that's that's my cyber church member that be on every week. Jennifer, I know you knew the Bible, girl. All right, y'all, let's go. Put your keep your finger. I think we done with Matthew. Don't worry about Matthew. Let's go. Go to Acts 17 real quick. Acts 17. And let's look at verse 1. I want y'all to see what two men could do. If two men could do it, how, how much y'all think we could do if we really was intentional? Huh? Go to Acts 17. Acts 17. Why do I put on these hot clothes while I'm trying to teach? I'm trying to be cute up here. I got a whole turtleneck and a whole thick sweater that I am hot. Acts 17. All right? Y'all got it? Verse 1. Now, when they pass through Amphipolis... And Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews, right? And Paul, okay, it won't, it won't Peter and John. It was Paul. It was Paul. But somebody else was with him. Who was with you, Paul? 
Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas. All right. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, uh -huh, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, yeah, I'm the crackers. You didn't know where the scripture was, and you travel with me all across the country. But you on IG, I, I'm going to give you some grace. And Paul, as his custom was, he went in unto them, and he broke the word down, the Bible says, for three days. Opening and alleging that Christ was supposed to suffer and that he rose from the dead and that his name is Jesus and he is giving them y'all the word of God and the Bible says in verse 4 that some of them believed and they consorted with Paul and Silas and the devout Greeks a great multitude and there was even women that joined with Paul and Silas but the Jews which did not believe guess what they was moved with envy they were jealous because these men Paul and Silas, they 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 had so much authority, right? And the Jews don't like anybody that that look like they they got a one up on them. So now the Jews is jealous, and they took Paul and Silas, and they gathered them, and they um had them in the city so that the whole city could have an uproar, right? And when they found them not, Sh Siobhan, you just making up stuff. Go back and read the scripture, right? Y'all go back to five. I'm just making up stuff. Let me stop. Verse five. But the Jews which believed not was moved with envy. And they took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. All right, got it. So the ones that was moved with envy, them jokers went and got other jokers that was bad. The lewd, lewd is the, 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 the bottom folks, the, the low down people, okay? So they went, the, 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 the jealous folks goes and gets other terrible folks, and then they all get together, and the Bible says they set the city on an uproar. Because guess what they want to do? They want to go and now capture Paul and Silas because they understand that these two men, they got something on them that's powerful. And if we don't stop them, they're going to turn our city out for Jesus. And we're going to lose influence. And we're going to lose money. And we ain't going to be able to, to control these folks no more. So we got to figure out how to stop them. Okay? So they, 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 they go and they try to go to Jason's house. Right? And the Bible says they're banging on Jason's door. But the Bible didn't say they're banging. I'm saying it. They assaulted the house of Jason. That sounds like banging on the door, right? Right. So they banged on the door of Jason and they said, bring them out. And they didn't find them. And Jason and the brethren of the rulers of the city said, these that have turned the world upside down, they are here. So that was the reputation that Paul and Silas had. Their reputation was these jokers, they, they've been turning the world upside down and now they're in the city and ain't nothing we could do. Because they're going to turn, they're going to turn this city upside down too. That's the reputation we want. When they show up, they turn it out for Jesus. Oh God, when, when they show up, things going to change. When they pray, you better know God going to answer it. I'm still waiting for Tom Brady and them to call me and say, you know what? You call that girl, you're going to be all right. He probably should have called me before this last game, but he ain't called, so they lost. I don't know what he's going to do now. I got to meet him, though. But but you want the reputation of that one, they spent time with the Lord. That one, they got something on them. Call them for the wisdom. Call them for the strategy. Call her for a prayer. Call him for a word from the Lord. Call them for counsel. They, 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 they're making waves everywhere. I've heard about them. And when they come here, they're going to make a difference here too. These are the ones that have turned the world upside down. And they've come for us too. That's the Bible, y'all. That's the Bible. So I don't know why I said that. I don't know what made me talk about that, but 
Right. So you gotta you gotta be intentional. You gotta find the problem, and you gotta become the problem solver. You gotta find the need and meet the need. And why was I talking about Paul and Silas? I was talking about how Jesus got the multitude together and how he began to give them the Beatitudes and he began to give them the word, right? Why, why was I talking about Paul and Silas? Because I was talking about turning the world upside down, right? Yeah, world changes. I was talking to y'all about turning the world upside down, right, 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 right. All right, so the next thing, the first one was find the need, meet the need, find the problem, become a problem solver, okay? The next thing you got to do is ask the Father to give you a burden, a burden for souls. Many of us, we may have uh, 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 good intentions, but y'all, you can't do real ministry without a burden. A burden is a weight. A burden is, is a load. Definition says typically a heavy one. There has to be a heavy load, a heavy weight on you to see people saved. There has to be a heavy, I have some other words for burden. Yes, a burden means freight, uh, 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 a charge. Cargo. You got to have some spiritual cargo. You got to have a spiritual charge. There has to be a weight that's been given to you from the Father that drives you and fuels you to want to wanna see somebody's life changed. No burden, no ministry. If you don't have a burden, y'all, you're not called to ministry. You can't win souls without a burden. You cannot win people to Christ without having this load, this weight on you to say they need God. I want them to live better. I want them to experience the life that I experience. I want them to be set free. I want the, the, the clutches and the grip of the enemy to be unloosed off of them. You got to have a burden. And the only way that you get a burden is asking the Father to release it on you. You got to ask God, God, give me a burden for what you love. Give me a burden for what you, for, 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 for souls. Give me a burden for the lost. Give me a burden for the broken. Give me a burden for the confused. Give me a burden. I have a burden for influencers. I have a burden for leaders. I have a burden for entertainers. I have a burden for those who are in the public eye. I'm, I'm targeting these two guys, these two rappers. They've been up on my stories. I'm like, come on, baby, let's, let's get with it. His name is Holy Gabbana, and there's another one. I be saying the words wrong. Amber be joking me. She said, the boy name won't DJ Khali. I don't know. I, I thought it was Khali. I called somebody Tony Lanez on the line. I'm old, so I don't know how to pronounce these people's names. But one of them is Holy Gabbana, and another one, you spell his name, 1K Few. And I'm probably saying that wrong. P. Hugh, I don't know. But I know what? I know them two have said yes to God, and now they are using their platform to, to rap and to rap about Jesus Christ and salvation. And I don't know if they got a pastor. I don't know if they got anybody that's, that's working with them with the word of the Lord. I don't know if they have anybody encouraging them and praying for them, but I, I want to meet them. I want to talk to them. I want to pray with them. I want to have Bible study with them. So that, that, that's, that's the, I, they on my, they on my list. Kanye West is still on my list. Walker Flocker, still on my list. Still on my target. 50 Cent, still. If I ever get an opportunity, ever get an opportunity, I'm going to walk through that door and I'm going to walk through it boldly. So any of y'all got connections with that, with the, with the Gabbana guy and the other one, tell them I want to see him. Tell them I want to talk to him. Tell them I want to come and do Bible study with them and all they rapper crew. All of them. 
I saw him baptizing some people the other day. I said, see, that this, this boy trying to do right. He, he's turned his life around. He needs to be encouraged. He might have a pastor. But even if he don't, hey, I want to be a sister. I want to encourage you in the things of God. So if y'all, they your cousins, they your boys, you went to school with them, find them for me. Tell them I want to talk to them. I want to pray with them. I want to congratulate them for saying yes to God. I'm intentional, y'all. I got a burden for people like that because it's called getting key influencers. You get the key influencers, they use their influence to win other souls. I told, I'm at the big fish. What about all the fish? I'm at the big fish. The way the world is, we need some people who got influence to make a difference. So while we got some working on the small fish, I want to work on the big fish. And the larger my platform gets, I wanted to get, get big, not for me, but I want the platform to get large so that I can get to those people so I can tell them about Jesus. It's a, it's a method to it. It's a method to it. So you have to ask the father, number two, ask the father for a burden. What is a burden? A weight, a load, spiritual cargo. Freight, a charge. Ask God to give you a charge to get out there and win souls. When you get that burden, you will see what the natural eye don't see. It's like a radar. You'll pick up stuff that other folks don't pick up. God will have you to do things that the natural mind wouldn't even think to do. It's called having a burden. Having a burden. So you got to have a burden to become effective. Number three. Number three. You have to live a consistent, a consistent Christian life. Remember I told you guys, people follow who they trust. People follow what is believable. They follow results. And so when they see the consistency in your life, then that is a, 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 a soul winning tool or a soul winning mechanism. Because you're not looking like you, you end the day out tomorrow. This is who you are. It's a lifestyle. And they can look at you because you are the living epistle. Hello, remember? You're the living Bible that people are looking at every day. So you got to live a consistent Christian life. Matthew, the fifth chapter, 14th verse says, you are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. So what? Let your light so shine where? Before men. Only way you're going to be able to win souls is they got to see your good works. Your light ain't shining and you always in the house. All you do is go to church and come home. That makes you feel spiritual. I'm always in church. That's all I do. Go to church and come home. You don't have no balance. You don't know how to have another conversation outside of church. That's all you can talk about. Don't know what's going on in the world. Let your light so shine before men so that they can see your good works. They see your good works and then what happens? They in turn glorify God that's in heaven. They can't glorify God if they don't see the good works in our lives. And that has to be something that is that you are consistent about. This light. That has to be something that you are consistent about. Y'all hear me? Consistent. They follow you when they trust you. All right? The next one, be very intentional about um, building bridges. All this links together. 
you have to be willing to go where the sinners are. The Bible says that we ain't, we ain't, we don't live in the world. We ain't, no, no, no. The Bible says we do live in the world. We're just not of the world. That didn't mean stay away from everybody who don't believe like you. That doesn't believe, that doesn't mean don't fellowship with those who don't, you have to be around them to win them. You don't do what they do. You can't be of the world, of their mindset. You can't be of their culture. But you're going to be around them. That's the only way you're going to be able to, for them to see your good works. Well, Jesus didn't do it. Yes, he did. All right, get your Bibles. Let's go to Luke, the 19th chapter. I'm almost done. This shouldn't be this long. I think I'm still in the consecration. Luke 19. Is this helping anybody? Luke 19. Luke 19. And I don't think I'm going to read all of it. Um, Because I, I wanted to be on only an hour tonight. I'm sorry, y'all. But you know, I get stirred up. Luke 19, 1 through 10. Um, let me see. I'm going to read it real quick. All right. And Jesus entered and he passed through Jericho. And there was a man by the name of Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector. And Zacchaeus had plenty of money. And he sought to see Jesus and who he was. He wanted to know who Jesus was. And he couldn't get to him because it was so many people. And he was a little man. So he couldn't, he couldn't move his way around because there were so many people. Remember, I told you guys that the word had got out about all Jesus was doing. So everywhere he went, there was masses of people. So Jesus, I mean, so Zacchaeus, he hears Jesus is coming and he wants to see this man. And so because he was little, he couldn't get to him. So what did he do? The Bible says in verse four, he ran before and he climbed up a sycamore tree to see him. And he was just waiting for Jesus to pass by. When I was a kid, I learned the song, Zacchaeus was a itty bitty man and an itty bitty man was he. He climbed upon a sycamore tree. The Lord, he wanted to see. I remember that song. Um, he climbed up a sycamore tree and waited for Jesus to pass. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and Jesus saw him. And he said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today, I must come to your house. And he made haste and he came down and he received him joyfully. He received Jesus joyfully. And guess what? Zacchaeus wasn't saved, but he knew who Jesus was. And when they saw it, who was they? Who's they? All the religious people, all the publicans and all the pharisaical people. When they saw it, they all began to murmur. You know how the church folks do? Why she keep praying for all these celebrities? And why she keep want to look out for all these folks that ain't right? They not say murmur, 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 murmur. They murmur saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord, I, I, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have anything from any man by false accusation, I give it back to him four times. And Jesus said to him, this day, salvation has come to your house. Because God was not moved by what he did wrong. God was moved by the posture of his heart. You can't be so quick to judge, folks, because we don't know their heart posture. We don't know. He thought he was doing right. I give to the poor God. I, I, if, 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 if I do wrong, if I owe anybody, I give them more than what I even owe them. While the folks over there whispering and, and, and Jesus eating with the sinner. Jesus says, because of the posture of your heart, number one, you had enough sense to even recognize who I was. And when
when Jesus said, come, he, the Bible says he received Jesus joyfully. He honored him. He says, today salvation comes to your house. You got to be willing to bridge gaps. You got to be willing to do what others don't do. You got to be willing to, to go above and beyond. You got to be willing to be talked about. Y'all hear me? Let them say what they're going to say. When you got a burden, that's what fuels you. And your burden overrides any murmuring, any complaining, any backlash. Because you work for God. And you're fueled by the burden that he has given to you. He went to the sinner's house. And he said, today, salvation is yours. I'm teaching this Bible, baby. And that's pretty much it. Verse 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those who are lost. That's the goal. That's the assignment. That's the mission. That's who we go after. That's who we minister to. To those who are lost. To those who are lost. So, what did I tell y'all tonight? What's the points? Number one, meet the need. And then you're able to feed them the word of the Lord. Find a problem and solve it. What was number two? Number two, I forgot. What did I say for number two? Was it get a burden from the Lord? Ask the Father for a burden? Or did I miss one? I'm looking for y'all to give me the points. Number three, I believe I told you guys, you got to live a life that is consistent. It can't, it, it's not going to be a life changing if, it, if, if your life ain't been changed. It can't be believable if they don't see it in you. The next one was what? You got to build a bridge. You got to be willing to go the extra mile. You got to be willing to be talked about. That's about three or four or five. I'm telling you all right. Put it all under that same one. Go, 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 go where others don't want to go. Go after the ones that Jesus went after. He said, I didn't come to save those who are saved, but I came to save those who are lost. That was his mission then. This is our mission today. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for tonight. I bless you for Cyber Church and for my Cyber Church family. I pray, God, that this word that was taught tonight, that it has inspired them, that it has fueled them, that it has got ignited in them a passion to be soul winners. And I pray, God, that you will give them the tools and the how-tos to be effective. God, I thank you that your word says that one comes and God, one plants a seed and then another comes and waters that seed and then you give the increase. I thank you Father for these seed planters. I thank you Father for these waterers and God I thank you for being the one that will God give the increase that will win the soul that will snatch the soul from the hand of the enemy and accept them as your son and your daughter. God use us this year to win more souls than we've ever won before. Not so much worried about winning them to our church God but God our focus is different our mindset is different we want to win them to you and God if they come to you then they'll want to come to a church to hear your word to be taught to be discipled to be strengthened by your word but God the first order of business is to show them who you are to offer them you so God give us the resources that we need to 
to meet needs. Give a strategy on how to be problem solvers. God, order our steps. Show us where the trouble is, Father. Glory to God and anoint us for our trouble. Show us, Father, where the chaos is and anoint us, God, to come with the cure. I thank you, God, that your hand of protection is upon our lives. So as we are going out and winning souls and sharing your gospel and sharing your love and feeding the hungry and praying for the broken and ministering to the lost, glory to God, I thank you that we are protected. No evil will come nigh our dwelling. Glory to God. I thank you, Father, that there will be no negative backlash because we are on assignment for you. And because we work for you, you promised to take care of us. So God, we love you. And we thank you for this army of soul winners that you are building that is rising up in this hour, in this end time. We call in every soul that's assigned to our life. We call in our family. We call in the children. We call in our co-workers. We call in our neighbors. We call in our enemies. We call in, Father, those that you've placed on my heart. I call them in, God. I call in the influencers. I call in the actors, the athletes. I call them in, God. Those who are rich and wealthy and don't know they need you. They think their money is the answer. But I thank you, God, for troubling their spirit. And I thank you, Father, for giving them encounters with true men and women of God that will give them your truth, that will demonstrate your love and your power. And they will say yes to you. Oh, we declare that this will be a year that there shall be an influx of souls being won to the kingdom and we will be partakers in that soul winning. We will be ones that glory to God will have souls under our belt that we can say we worked for Jesus Christ. And as we do your work, God, we thank you that you will fix everything that we need to be fixed. As we seek your kingdom, we thank you, Father, that every need that we have will be met. I rebuke fear. I come against a stammering tongue. I come against nervousness. I come against cold feet. I come against numbness in the in their hands and fingers. They're bold. They're strong. They know what to say. And you will order their steps. They will not back down. They will not back up. They will not retreat. They will do exactly what you've given them to do. They're blocking out the naysayers. They're blocking out the Pharisees. They're blocking out the religious voice. Places, the religious spirits, the doubters, even those that will heckle and laugh and joke them. God, I thank you that they are focused and their eyes are on you. I thank you for a banner year of souls. I declare bigger souls for the kingdom this year. In Jesus' name. Now bless these seed sowers. Bless these, God, that is, oh God, even sown into this teaching. I thank you, Father. For increase in their lives. I thank you, Father, for financial increase. I thank you, Father, that this will be one of the best years they've ever had financially because they're sowing on good soil. They're sowing into good ground. They're sealing this word with the seed. Now, God, give them a harvest and let it be a quick one. In Jesus' name, amen and Amen. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I see you guys. I uh, believe next Monday. I'm home for a while. So I'll see you guys on next Monday. Don't forget if you want to be a part of the e-church, send us your information, buy your books, send me some messages. I'll probably be, probably be on throughout the week praying and doing my reels again. We off consecration. So I got time. Thank you for the badge. Taking flight. I love you. And so I'm going to make sure that I you know, encourage you guys throughout the week. Blessings to you guys. Blessings to you all. Go to work tomorrow. Go out in the street tomorrow and be very intentional about meeting a need, finding a problem and solving it and turning the world upside down. Have a good night.